I accidentally just restarted my own stream. And I have to figure out what I'm supposed to do about the, like, 20 seconds I just streamed. Um. I, uh. I think it was just this one that was, like, 18 seconds. So maybe I can just delete that. Because I don't really, uh, don't really need to be still, still keeping that, like, 10 seconds of me screwing up. Um, it's already been a day. But hi, welcome to Leading with Class Streaming. It's not always this much of a hot mess. But sometimes, even in the best of business, you don't always do your best. You're currently getting to see my Google Drive. It's a complete mess. There shouldn't be anything inappropriate in it. So I'm not stressing about like clicking through really, really fast. I appreciate any patience that you can give me. trying to figure out which which screen to put on so I can see the chat whenever I don't know what I'm doing because obviously I'm doing great today so uh, no one's watching yet I don't think uh, the little red person is still at a zero uh, or maybe there are no people here great uh, so I, uh, I'm Bree Sheldon. I rarely introduce myself at the beginning of these, but I figured I should probably do that, uh, to give a little context. Uh, I'm the, uh, like, presenter for Leading with Class, the writer, and the main creator. I create alongside John W. Sheldon, who is my husband, but also my business partner. Hey, Paul, thank you for stopping by. It is good to see you. Um, I am currently juggling some very serious family stuff while also trying to run a Kickstarter and also do leading with class, plus my normal life and work. So, uh, trying to do the streams has been a big priority for me. And I talked about priorities in a previous episode, and I have discovered that it is especially hard when dealing with family stuff to tell family, hey, I gotta go. <laughs> uh... But I'm here now, and uh, not super late, so why don't we look at some of the work that I want to get to today, and while we're doing so, if you have questions for me, please do put them in the chat. I do monitor it the whole time I'm on the episode. Sometimes I take a minute, but I do monitor it, and uh, I'd love to see if I can answer any questions you have. Um, and also, it's always nice whenever you say hello. Uh, I, I like to know who's here, um, even if you're just popping in for a minute. So, uh, I have, uh, today I wanted to do some editing, basically, like writing for the followership episode, and, um, that actually might involve a bit of research, so, uh, that's part of the reason why I wanted to work on it. And I also may be doing some work on some of the, uh, exercises for the episodes we have like in progress and um the uh the exercises is a lot of just like me figuring out the best way to execute an idea um so sometimes that can be fun to like talk about hi i think so uh janaya thank you for stopping by um for followership it's uh the episode, I, I did some notes in a previous episode of Leading with Class, and um, I wanted to basically, like, go through and flesh some of this out uh, and talk about, like, how we can, you know, like, use this concept of fellowship related to games. Oh. 
I'm so sorry for yawning. Really did not sleep last night. Um. <clears throat> I'm going to real quickly just announce on that Twitter account that I'm going live. Um, and, uh, try and draw some people in because as much as I am happy that the two of you are here, I always want to have a lot of people. In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and let me know what you're up to today. I'm excited to hear how people's lives are going because it's been a really stressful week, uh, especially in the U.S. So, um... Just hearing, hearing how people are going um, is important. It always throws me off that Twitch is at uh, TV whenever I go to tweet it. Oh, what what's the video script you're working on, Paul? I'm curious. A new core mechanics episode. So Paul has actually been on Leading with Class in the past and is uh, really excellent and does these great videos about core mechanics and RPGs and how they work. And um, uh, he, he has been in one of our episodes about um, how to, uh, part, of, part of that, how to build your leadership character sheet, which was formative to the workshop and really important. Um, and so he in chat has said he's working on a new episode and I fully do recommend actually, uh, checking those out. Um, I, uh, I have found them to be very useful whenever I'm struggling to understand a mechanic in a game that just like should not be confusing, but it's just because sometimes I don't always get things right the first try, but Paul's explanations always help. I um I found that video scripts are super challenging. Um for me mostly when it comes to like making them sound snappy. Um and that's more been a problem cuz I've mostly been working on leading with class since after my head injury. And so like <laughs> where it might be great uh before that happened, uh, now it's a lot more work and everything. So, um, the followership episode, I need to find, like, specific games to follow, uh, to, to reference. And I ran into this thing where, like, there's one that I thought might be good, but I don't think I own it. Uh, and we, uh, we, like, don't have a lot of resources for the show just yet. And, uh, like, I, uh... If you see me waving in front of my face, it's because there's a fruit fly. I just cannot get rid of them. They're driving me absolutely batty. Um, but uh, this is Companion's Tale, um, which I know is kickstarted. I did not 
I could not afford to kickstart at the time. And I don't think that it is, I'm, I'm not sure if it is currently available. Uh, it's just pre-order. So like not, not something I could actually dig into in detail. Um, so that's, that's like one of the big problems with the indie games industry is we have a lot of games where we see pieces of it or play it while it's in progress. But whenever I want to talk about the game in an episode, um, I have to like, you know, try and figure out if I can even do that. Like, do I have permission? So I have to contact people and, uh, you have to do all the, the, like the backup work for it. Um, just like people who would want to do like certain types of streams and stuff. Um, and like, I just, I see so many indie games in their like Kickstarter stage that I never know when they're actually done. So it's always like forever trying to find out, can I actually talk about this game? Um, because sometimes it'd be perfect and sometimes it would be just good and I have to like do a lot of thinking about it. And the way that I have to do this episode is, so I'm going to talk about managing up through the context of safety tools um, because I think that that's a good way to do that, like safety and consent tools. Let me actually clarify safety and consent tools because that's part of what they are like safety and consent tools, even though they're used by everyone at the table, are often a way for us to manage up by telling the GM, hey, that's content I don't want. And you push that up the ladder and be like, hey, please don't do that. Um, some of them are a little more forcible, like don't do that. It's not okay. Um, and every, everyone has a little bit different approach. Um, so I'll probably want to cover script change uh, at least mention it because it is designed in part with managing up in mind. Um, X card, um, I'm trying to think of, I need to like go to my, I think it's hilarious that the big bad con safety tools page is where I actually go the most whenever I want to reference safety tools. Um, so big bad con actually has these, uh, the game safety mechanisms page in their FAQ. And it's super useful. Um, and, uh, it doesn't have all of the tools, but it has quite a few of them. And I think lines and veils aren't really managing up. They're at boundary setting. Um, you need stuff that's used in game. So like cut break would be probably something appropriate. Um, and maybe the door is open. Um, cause that's more of like a walkout, uh, which isn't really managing up. Um, it's an appropriate tool and it's a fine tool, but it is not necessarily managing up. Uh, yeah, I guess the support flower counts. I'm not sure I would consider it effective for this, but it is a safety and consent tool that people use, um, that might, some people might consider that. So one of the biggest things about managing up is that you have to be, um, clear um and I I personally like um I personally found uh when looking at like the the way the support flowers use that the the design of the flower makes it hard for it to be clear but it is good that it has multiple ways to provide feedback um, but there are other tools that, you know, provide varieties of feedback as well. Um, 
and I'll have to look it over again, I think, uh, before I recommend it as a tool for specifically managing up in game. Because, like, script change I actually had managing up in mind whenever I wrote it. Like, that's part of what was behind this. I was learning about that in school, and, you know, it's part of the thing. The X card is just a very clear, like, mechanism, um, and cut and break are, like, feedback in-game that influence how the game goes, so they count. And I think the the issue is of clarity and and making sure I understand how if the support how support flower has changed since I read it last. Um, I want to make sure that I'm clear on how it works these days. Um, I don't know if they if it's a moving like a living document or not like script changes. And like the X card can sometimes be. Um, let's see. Um, so those are, I'll, I'll want to go over those and talk about, um, key elements of managing up are courage, clarity, I'm referring to my textbook right now because I want to make sure that I don't miss something that I wanted to put in there, but like just got overwhelmed with. Communication. Managing up is such a complex topic, but it shouldn't be. Ah, care. There we go. I like using things with the same letter whenever I give lists of things. <laughs> so, uh, my book talks about, this is uh, the leadership experience by Daft. Um... And it talks about courage and, um, like, communication as part of this. And, uh, like, clarity is part of communication, but it's also, like, understanding um, is what I'm talking about with clarity. Knowing what your leader's intentions are and stuff like that. Because followership is about being a leader following a leader, basically. Like, you're, it's, it's a way of putting you... Like, even if you are in a subordinate role, putting you in a place where you're, like, kind of coming up to their same level. Um, and, uh, I think that, like, it, uh, understanding intent and everything is a large part of that. And some of that is a communication, but some of it is being willing to be like, hey, no, what do you actually mean? And can I understand that? And and having clarity in both directions with your intent and their intent. Um, so let me actually go ahead and be like clarity, understanding and intent and purpose. Both giving and receiving. Oh my gosh, I can't spell. Both giving and receiving uh, messages. Courage is basically the willingness to stand up and challenge when necessary. Communication is um, Providing who's like I, I I'm trying to think of the right word here. Uh providing messaging that is Man, if I could spell, it would be a miracle. 
providing messaging that is clear. And care is um, prioritizing the people. So the reason why I want to do these little like key elements of managing up is because like um, people have talked about seeing safety and uh, consent tools misused and real life tools for managing up uh, can be misused as well. Like say, uh, say there's this guy who's working in an office and his boss is a uh, Latina woman. And she makes a minor mistake uh, with something. And what ends up happening is he reports it to, like, higher HR because somebody he knows or maybe he thinks that's the procedure instead of talking to her directly. And that puts her job significantly at risk while he, you know, just didn't consider that aspect. And that's like actually like a thing that can happen is like people don't understand that for a minor mistake reporting to like a higher level without directly connecting with someone can cause some conflict. It can cause problems to put people at risk unnecessarily. And it could be like a super small error. Like maybe she just made a typo in a report, but like his report of this to HR makes it look a lot bigger because he's someone with privilege um, coming and basically saying that someone who is marginalized is doing a bad thing. And that's one of the many reasons that care is on the list, because you want to think about the person and how it will affect them. It doesn't mean that you don't raise the question, but how you do it is important. And what you ask and what you say is important. Like, I, I try to, whenever I have a manager, uh, manage up pretty significantly as necessary. But I will do it differently when I have, say, a black woman manager and a white man as a manager because they have different needs and different situations. If I, like, come up to my white guy boss who's normally a little brisk with me and be like, hey, you know, I think that you made a typo in this and, like, could we try and fix that because otherwise it's going to go bad, right? Um that's no problem. But with, you know, a woman of color, if I were like trying to do that kind of thing, I'm not going to treat her with kid gloves, but I might make sure that I'm not doing that criticizing publicly. Um, so definitely make sure that I have a meeting with her and say that kind of thing, because it is less likely to make her look bad whenever it is something actually pretty minor that can be blown out of proportion by others. And this goes back to the episode on uh, prejudice and uh, values and perception. People will find one bad thing that they don't like about a person, which may be they made a typo in a report because they have like underlying inherent bias against like black women or women of uh, Latino descent and everything. And then they just... <laughs> totally wreck everything for them because they don't know how to do it in a nice way. Um, 
and they don't understand that those biases are there. And like, so that's why I say, you know, whenever you're managing up, there are sometimes steps you have to take to um, not do the managing up in a way that may be harmful to the person you're managing up whenever you don't intend to harm them. So that's kind of some of what I'm talking about with these elements of managing up. You do have to have the courage to stand up and actually bring up the issues whenever they happen. You do have to be clear and like listen and understand, you know, both their side of things and your side of things. Make sure you know what you want out of the situation. Communicating is absolutely necessary. Um, you can't just keep things a secret forever. And you also have to have care with it. Because otherwise you risk things, domino effect, causing problems whenever they're not necessarily supposed to do that. And if we employ these kind of elements whenever using safety tools, of just being like, hey, yeah, I'm going to have the courage to use a safety tool whenever I feel uncomfortable, and I'm going to be clear about what it affects and what the topic is that I'm uncomfortable with, and I'm going to say it in a way that's understandable to people, and I'm going to try and be relatively consistent with it, and I'm going to think about how it affects the other people whenever I use this tool, not to stop me from using it, but to guide how I use it. Could make a big difference. And at least, I think... If these were our habits, it might make a lot more people willing to approach safety tools and consent tools. So, you know, it's kind of complicated, <laughs> I guess. But that's why I'm talking about it through games, um, to try and make it simpler. Did anybody have any questions about the managing up and safety and consent tools and stuff? Um, anything at all while I take a couple of drinks of tea? I have no idea how long the delay is on this. I need to learn that. <laughs> um, so, after I talk about that in the episode, or maybe before, I don't know which direction I'll be doing this in. Um, I may reorganize. I need to talk about the styles of followership. And this is going to be pretty challenging because I would like to use a game example. Um, and I'm really having a hard time uh, figuring out what game to use to represent uh, basically like the different types of followers because they're really important. Sorry, I keep covering my mouth. Um, but, like, it's maybe not always uh, it, it's maybe not always immediately understandable. I'm currently scrolling through the document trying to, like, find the list of these that I'm using. I know it's from this book. I just don't know where it is. Ah, here we go. So the different types of followers uh, include the alienated follower, the conformist, the pragmatic survivor, the passive follower, and the effective follower. And these basically define both their thinking style a bit and level of engagement. Like the alienated follower is an independent critical thinker who is passive in the organization, which is normally what I have fallen under in my jobs because I was often quite unsatisfied. Um, and 
they um they are typically pretty cynical and everything uh so they you know kind of a big thing um in the comments in the in the chat uh if you happen to think of any games that uh might uh basically give a give a perspective of followership please feel free to offer them um i know it's down to just like one of you now but i still appreciate that you're here and would love your input um i'm trying to think of games that like so i'm not like just using D D, uh and games in which you do like follow um I thought Companion's Tale might be interesting because um, you are literally like the followers and companions of a hero. Um, and I'm just not really pulling out any like games to mind. And I guess I have to think about this even more because the elements the game would have to have would be that it would be able to be explained why these followership styles match up and it would have to be um ones where followership makes sense and we tried to make people mostly um pretty uh pretty independent in games but whenever we have group adventuring and stuff like that it may make sense to have these kind of things so I'm just trying to think and that's a that's that's the one the one thing that I I need to iron out about this episode. It's funny cuz as as the uh as I get later in my studies that I'm writing about for these scripts, they get harder to write about um mostly because I'm becoming a little stricter with my standards um, and because they're more complex topics and uh, I still want to do a lot more episodes of leading with class but I want to like actually engage people too so I need to make sure that I do a good job and um, I've been trying to think of how to make this particularly interesting. And I'm wondering if trying to be like cool and interesting is part of what's holding me back. Um, sorry. Uh, so, uh, Janaya, Janaya, I hope, is, uh, in chat and says, the only thing that comes to mind is Durance, and that is not inherently about following or leading, but more about the effects of hierarchy, usually about the not healthy parts of that. Durance could be somewhere to look, and I will, I will give that a peek and see, um, if there's anything I can pull from that, um. Because, I mean, it's okay to talk about the, the bad parts of leadership. Um, or the bad parts of bad leadership, I guess. Uh, I'm, and I'm, like, fine with, with talking about that. Um, but it would have to be uh, something that I can, like, really pull a, a lot of... Um, a lot of... Uh, theme from or concept from so i'm a fan of pretty much all of jason morningstar's work so i I'd, I'd be fine with using it i'll just have to look it up because it sounded really intense so i never played it <laughs> that's like me with like half of jason's games they're amazing but they're really intense and so i don't play them i'm a low-key game player but Let's see. Yeah, I think I'll... Um, I think I'll sit on that. I'll check out Durance. 
And uh, for now, go ahead and pop over to the exercises that I wanted to work on. Like the exercise on power that is just like not started at all. I need to open the power episode. Hey, Manixer. It's good to see you. Thank you for stopping by. I'm currently, like, switching from the followership episode over to the exercises that I wanted to work on, including power episode. I'm trying to figure out... <sighs> what to do for people's uh, exercise for this. Oh, I always forget that you can't do like useful things. How do I figure out what exercises are most useful? Um, so I actually, it's kind of silly, but I play them over in my head. Um, so I've basically like, I've done a lot of like leadership exercises and trainings and stuff like that uh, throughout my time in school and have a fair amount of experience with like whether something carried forward for me or whether it didn't. Um, and, uh, I also have practiced basically, like, how to, uh, run through something in my head to see, like, whether it's engaging or not. Um, like, that, and also I've done a fair amount of research to, like, just what kind of activities engage people the most. Like, what kind of activity uh has the best retention and stuff like that it's stuff that's in a lot of like educator uh studies and things like that um for me in particular i do like mental test runs and i compare it to like some of the study data that i've seen on like what's most effective um and may it might be not I, I will be honest, like, I might not be 100% up to date, but, um, that's, that's where I start. Um, basically, one of my rules is that I, if I get bored with it, then someone's gonna get bored with it. Like, pretty much guaranteed. So, uh, it's a, it's like, I, I kind of see if it sounds fun, and I also run everything by John pretty much, to see how he feels about it as someone who has also done a lot of, like, different kinds of testing and analysis and exercises and everything. I have all these definitions that I'm copying over because there's a billion definitions for this episode. Ah, dang it. Why do I do that? So the episode on power is based on uh, an essay. It's pretty close to it. I, I mostly copied and pasted and then, like, reworded some bits for, like, readability for the script um, from an essay that I did that was also a blog post that I did because it's uh, basically using D&D classes to explain the different types of power. And it's, like, super uh, important, like... It was one of the key elements in how I decided to start do leading with class. Um, but 
I really like I would like to do an exercise that's like actually interesting to people and I'm just trying to figure out what that would be because like I could have them identify like uh, types of power that they see in the world or in game um Stuff like that. <sighs> I'm so sorry. For yawning so much. I I ask questions. I just need an exercise. Maybe I could make a mini game? Maybe what I can do is have them choose a class in Dungeons and Dragons to play in the following minigame. And think of how different types of power. Choose a class. Let's mention the video to play in the following minigame. And think of how their different types of power interact with different challenges. So what I can do here is I can do like a question then a die roll kind of thing. With like give them like mini stats. Maybe I can just like assign each one. the different type of power as a stat. That sounds fun. So, what classes do I talk about? That would be useful to remember. Okay, paladins. John will probably lay these out in a much nicer way to, like, be usable. Thank you. I appreciate that you think it sounds interesting. Like, I would really like this to be something fun. Barb. I'm such a typo monster today. 
So those are basically like what I'm going to start with. I might make it more complicated. I don't know. But what I think I'll do is um, I have each class with a plus one to the different kind of power beside them. Um, and what I can do is construct like a little narrative with some questions and then roles. Um, like with like a you are the leader of an adventuring party traveling through a deep forest. Yeah. I think you'll want to have, let's see, like something like what what would be best for legitimate power? Uh you're confronted by uh, knights of the realm who question your uh, basically like right to pass through. How do you convince? Ether. Roll one D six and add any bonuses. I think the way it will be is like five or six. You succeed. Well, and they are convinced. There we go. I think that's how it's going to go. And then I'll have one, like at least one for each of these. Uh, so what I have on the screen in, for anyone who's just listening is um, the exercise is going to be like a mini game. And the way it works is you're the leader in adventuring party uh, traveling through a deep forest. I'll put more detail there. Um, <laughs> and I have you're confronted by knights of the realm who question your right to pass through. How do you convince them to let you through using your specific type of power? Roll 1d6 and add any bonuses. On uh, 5 to 6, you succeed well and they are convinced. On a 3 to 4, you manage to convince them and they are unimpressed by you. And a 1 to 2, you fail and are directed to a different path through the forest, delaying you. And I think I'm also going to have a 7 basically, because you can have a plus one. Um, and gain new uh, new friends, new associates. You succeed and gain new respect from them, they will remember you.
I don't know if that sounds interesting to anyone else. Uh, but to me, I think it would be really fun. That's kind of like a lonely game. Um, and it's always fun to like think up new little challenges. Uh, so, Manixler says, interesting thing is you can only get the 7 plus result if you're using the kind of power associated with the class. Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out how I might word that uh, to be clear, you know what I mean? Like, um... The... The way I the way I kind of did the the episode uh, is I used the different classes to explain how different types of power work. Um, so basically, like uh, paladins have typically legitimate power, but like everyone can have other kinds of power. Um, and uh, it's basically like the ones that are the most commonly used by those classes, if that makes sense. Um, like, fighters most often use coercive power, but could have, you know, other kinds of power. Uh, and, and this is mostly just to, like, get you thinking about, like, how those different, um, uh, how those different, like, types of power interact with things. It's power that we use in real life can be situational. Um, but this is to d demonstrate how the power works and by what kind of person. I hope that makes sense. I feel like I'm fumbling a little. I am sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm using the classes to express the different forms of power. Thank you. I apologize. I'm having a relatively slow day, uh, like, common sense-wise and clarity-wise, so sometimes this stuff is a little hard to explain. Um, but yeah. Um, we have about five minutes left. Uh, so, did anyone have any questions um, that you might want to ask? And uh, I'd, I'd be happy to answer them. And I'll work on this more, and eventually you'll see something that looks a lot like it in the final progress. Yeah, my I've, I'm on my first cup of tea, and, like, super feeling it, because I had to deal with, like, a family crisis first thing this morning, so it's too much. <laughs> But I always try to answer your questions the best I can, nonetheless. Um, I, uh... I don't know if you got to see the last episode, but I answered a whole bunch of questions about safe spaces, um, uh, diverse spaces, uh, and everything. So, uh, I hope if you haven't had the chance, you get to check that out. And I have been putting up episodes of this streaming on YouTube. Um, hopefully, like, people will enjoy, like, watching those and stuff while we're trying to get back on schedule with everything so um yeah uh manic sarah ken davidson uh from twitter asked me a bunch of questions 
about um, creating uh, diverse spaces, and I got a little passionate, uh, so. <laughs> and Janaya, I agree. Anything remotely difficult is too much before tea. Uh, I've been, um, I'm doing the Kickstarter for a turn, and I'm doing a lot of uh, stuff for my family right now because we have um, some health issues with my grandmother who is uh, like in like hospice care stage at this point. And so I've been doing a lot of juggling and uh, sometimes like it's harder than it should be. But I've been trying to still like do this stuff because I care about it and leading with class means so much to me and I want to make a good product as well as like actually help people learn and um part of that is like whenever there's more engagement it's nice because it makes me feel a little more energized toward it um so i appreciate everyone who shows up to the streams who shares things who likes things it means a lot to me um part of it is just john's current situation with work uh is making it difficult to get a lot of editing time in and so uh we're gonna try and fix that but we'll see how it goes thank you i'm i'm trying to keep up on what i can um just want to get some success going i think it's it's where i'm at right now have some wins because a lot of stuff has been feeling not winning. Um, I, uh, I'm trying to do, uh, just so you know, for the future, for anyone watching, uh, anyone who watches this later, um, I, uh, I take, uh, Thank you, Janaya. Thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate it and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Um, I take questions on Twitter, Patreon, Instagram, and via email. Um, all those ways to uh, basically talk about over stream uh, each week. I can talk about those or I work on episodes and stuff. That's what work works out. Um, so if you would like to... Uh, you can check us out on Twitter at Leading W Class, and we're on Instagram as Leading with Class, and Patreon.com slash Leading with Class is our Patreon link. Um, we're always happy to have more backers, uh, but even just shares and contributions are awesome. And if you would prefer to email, or if you are an organization interested in using Leading with Class stuff for your educational institution or for your business you can contact us at leadingwithclass at gmail.com it is checked daily and we are here to try and help you find ways to teach leadership through games so uh unless there are any other questions i'm gonna go ahead and finish up for the day because i have lots to do but i really appreciate you all stopping by and i hope that you enjoy the stream Have a good day. Thank you so much for stopping by.